Okay, so let's get started and let's highlight that window and get this one going. And this is the long awaited and difficult to produce advanced ANOVA lecture. And so let's go back to where we ended with the welcome to advanced, uh, welcome to analysis of variance. And wanted to remind everybody we're analyzing variance. Variance S squared is the sum of squares. Let me get my pointer, my laser pointer. Woo! So we have the sum of squared deviations, the sum of squares over uh, some type of uh, you know degree of freedom. And so then that's what we're having. Uh, that's what we get with the analysis of variance. That is, we take the sum of squares and we divide it by a degree of freedom. We do that for the within and the between uh, you know, sources of variance. And then uh, to look at this whole uh, anal you know, uh, ANOVA table, uh, the mean squares for within is just the sum of squares within divided by the degrees of freedom within. And the uh, you know, mean squares between is the sum of squares between divided by the degrees of freedom between. And then finally the F for this uh, you know, one-way ANOVA is that we take the mean squares between, so the effect, uh, and we divide it by the mean squares within, that is the error. So we're hoping that the effect is stronger than the error and that will you know, indicate that we have, you know, have sufficient evidence to reject our null hypothesis. So uh, just to reiterate, and I'll do this several times just to you know, you know, make sure you understand it, analysis of variance is we're analyzing variance. And so we basically divide up the variance in the experiment into different parts. We have the variance of the total experiment, experiment and that's in you know, the sum of squares total. Uh, the variance due to conditions, and uh, that's between. Uh, we have the variance due to subjects, and uh, in a between subjects design, that automatically goes into error. And we have the variance due to error in the experiment, that is things that are not controlled, things that are varying uh, you know, randomly. And uh, then there are sources of degrees of freedom associated with each one of these sources of variance. So we have all of these different uh, sources of variance in the uh, ANOVA. And depending upon the ANOVA that we're doing, the design that we have, we'll look at these a different way. So in a one-way ANOVA, which we've been talking about, we have the sum of squares total. And we divide that up. We divide that up into the sum of squares within, which is error, uh, which includes experimental error, randomness, and the subjects, variance due to the subjects. And sum of squares between, or sum of squares due to factor A, or variable A. And that sum of squares has any effect in it, uh, effect of the independent variable. So if there's an effect of the independent variable, uh, we should get a significant F factor because the F value uh, will be uh, above 1 and hopefully way above 1, uh, indicating that there's more effect than there is error in the experiment. Now, a two-way experiment, a two-way ANOVA, <coughs> excuse me, is when we uh, have two independent variables and so then what we do is we divide up the uh, variance even a, a little bit more finely. We have the total variability in the experiment. And we can divide that up like we've done before into the between treatments variability and the within treatments variability. Again, within treatments variability will be error variance, error in the experiment, randomness, and also error associated with the subjects. And the error of the variability associated between treatments, that is uh, the effect of the uh, treatments. 
and then we can divide that up even more finely, the between treatments variability, into the variability due to factor A, the first independent variable, variability due to factor B, uh, the second independent variable, and variability due to the interaction of A and B together. And then on your source table, you will have, you know, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, uh, you know, sum of squares and mean squares associated and an F factor uh, associated with factor A, factor B, and the interaction. <clears throat> when we start talking about within subjects designs or a mixed ANOVA, uh, then things just get very complicated very quickly. So in a mixed design where we have uh, variability uh, uh, where we have uh, one factor which is between subjects and another factor that's within subjects. Here's what happens. We have the total sum of squares of the experiment, the total variability, and we can basically divide that up into uh, the variability due to the conditions uh, and the variability within groups. And now because we are uh, you know, uh, doing one factor within subjects, we can take this variability that's within groups, which normally we would say this is just error, and we can actually partial out the variability due to the subjects and the variability due to error in the experiment, or randomness, or just things that we're not controlling. And so uh, now we have error here. We have the effects of the treatment here. And then we have the effects of subjects being different people here. And we can look at each one of these individually with an F ratio. And that allows us to uh, determine what, uh, you know, what's the effect of the uh, independent variable. Uh, and what's the effect of having subjects being different people. And so uh, just showing you this so you can kind of see what it's like, but I never ask uh, about this on an exam. So a two-way mixed ANOVA, uh, here's what you'd start uh, to see uh, when you do uh, analysis of variance and get your source table. You'll have uh, you know one source which is A, which is the between subjects factor, and uh, the degrees of freedom on that would be A minus one, that is the number of levels minus one. Then you'd have B, which kind of looks like a two-way between ANOVA, but really this is the uh, you know within subject factor. So this is the factor that's picking up uh, the effects of subjects being different people and the degrees of freedom for that are you know the number of levels of the within subject factor minus one they have the interaction which seemed pretty much normal it's a by b that is the interaction of the between subjects and the within subject factor but now what's different is you have two error terms and that's because you have to uh, calculate uh, your mean squares uh, or your, excuse me, your uh, F values, your F ratios, differently with different error terms for the between subject and the within subject factors. And so here we see that, and this is just the degrees of freedom again. Oops, I want to go back there. And so what you'll do uh, is that uh, to calculate your F value for the between subject factor, you'd use uh, the you know uh, factor A and this error term called subjects within A, and there it is there. And then to calculate uh, your uh, you know B factor, the within subjects factor, you'd use the uh, you know means uh, square of B with this. Uh, subjects by the B factor uh, nested in A. 
and that's what that means and again I'd never really make you you know learn this for an exam but I just want to show you how difficult a within subjects ANOVA is and this is all to basically deal with the variability of people being people uh, but then uh, we come basically back to the basic ANOVA table and uh, that's you know the catch-up part of the lecture now let's move into the uh, advanced part of the lecture so here is a two-way between subjects uh, ANOVA effect table and what I've done is I've mapped it out so what you know uh, you need to know about it so since we're using SPSS and we're not doing any of these calculations by hand or in Excel or something like that what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna you know look for the uh, sum of squares from the first independent variable we'll get that sum of squares from uh, you know uh, SPSS so that's pretty easy uh, we don't we can get the degrees of freedom from SPSS but you don't really need to do that uh, the degrees of freedom are the number of levels of independent variable 1 minus 1 and then we just take the sum of squares divide it by the degrees of freedom and then we take the sum of squares from uh, you know the mean squares excuse me uh, from uh, you know uh, you know factor one and we divide it by the mean square errors the source for independent variable two uh, sum of squares we get from SPSS uh, the degrees of freedom the same as before uh, which is levels minus one so the number of levels in uh, factor two uh, mean square is the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom once we get that we take that we divide it by the mean square error and that gives us our F value and then the interaction this is from SPSS uh, and now the degrees of freedom will be we take the degrees of freedom whatever it was for level uh, for the factor one multiply it by factor two and so in this case one times one is one sum of squares divided by one and that gives us the mean square interaction we divide that by the error term error term like always from SPSS we get the uh, you know sum of squares uh, the degrees of freedom error are you know the degrees of freedom of level one times the degrees of freedom of level two times the number of subjects in the experiment uh, minus one and then we can get the mean square error for that which we'll use up here in these F values and then uh, there's a total degree uh, total uh, you know source and we get the sum of squares from SPSS and the degrees of freedom we get from SPSS but it's also very easy to calculate n minus 1 the number of subjects in the experiment minus 1 and so uh, what we can do then uh, is we can think about uh, the sum of squares and the degrees of freedom in the experiment as, this way if we take the sum of squares uh, from IV1 IV2 the interaction and error that should all add up to the total and likewise these degrees of freedom will add up to uh, this total number of degrees of freedom and we can play around with that uh, when we actually have a, a source table such as this what's the total sum of squares and degrees of freedom well total degrees of freedom you just take 15 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 and you add that up and that gives you your total degrees of freedom and so sum of squares you just add up these numbers and that will give you your total uh, sum of squares uh, and that's uh, 12 uh, 41.46 and 29 so what's the n well it's 29 plus 1 which is 30 and then uh, how do you get your mean squares well you just basically take your sum of squares 512.8667 uh, and divide it by 2 and that'll give you your mean square for uh, you know uh, independent variable number 1 and so you could very easily calculate uh, the four, oh, 
I said sum of squares. No, that should be mean squares. And let me correct that. What are the four mean squares? There we go. And just by doing some division, you get these. And then finally, what are the three F statistics? And again, it's the mean square error, uh, 256.4333, divided by the mean square error error, mean square error, which is 9.0667. And that's 28.28. And so the main effect for independent variable 1 would be an f of 2 and 29. Uh, and uh, you know those are the degrees of freedom numerator and denominator, or degrees of freedom effect and degrees of freedom error. And that's the uh, test statistic. And even though SPSS does this, I'd like you to know what it is. Uh, so you take the degrees of freedom numer numerator, uh, which is 2, and the degrees of freedom denominator, which is 29, and you go to the table, and this is for a 5% 5 5 critical region, and so our critical value for P equals 0.05, or alpha equals 0.05, excuse me, is 3.33. Uh, we can go back here. Uh, and so is this significant or not? Well, it's really significant. Well, significant at probably greater than the 0.05 level. It needs to be above 3.3 to be significant at 0.05, and it is. And I think uh, when I, uh, from the uh, real example, the P level is 0 0.0001. So uh, that is a, uh, uh, you know, a significant uh, result uh, with a very low type 1 error chance. And uh, let's talk about now the order of interpreting effects. That is, you have the means from your uh, you know, experiment. Now you have a bunch of F statistics and P values, and you know what's significant or not. How do you actually interpret that is, talk about what's important from the results of the experiment. And so uh, there's an order in which you do this. Uh, you first talk about the main effects and whether or not they're significant. And if they're significant, then you would say, well, you know, we have a significant difference for gender. And so the means say that men uh, score higher than women on this variable. And so that would be an example of a main effect interpretation. And uh, the, then you do that. Then you look at the interaction. And if the interaction is significant, we say that that interaction qualifies the main effects. And what qualifies means is that now the main effects are not really important any longer because the interaction is what you need to talk about. And uh, that's really what the interaction is about. So let's move on and take a look at an example to clarify this. Uh, so here is study three from uh, last week or two weeks ago. And this is the study looking at uh, reading comprehension here on the DV. And it's looking at uh, people or students who have a low uh, verbal IQ or a high verbal IQ and have a low baseball knowledge versus a high baseball knowledge. And we see that between the low and high verbal IQ, there's no difference in reading comprehension or pretty much no difference uh, if you have low baseball knowledge. However, we see that there is a difference between low and high verbal IQ if you have a high level of baseball knowledge. And that's because the reading passage was about baseball. And so now what we need to do is we need to localize effects. Well, let's see, what's my next slide? Eh, okay, good. So we do the analysis of variance, and we find out that we have 
two significant main effects. And what that means is the main effect for baseball knowledge is significant, which means that if we combine this and this, we get a point here. And if we combine this and this, we get a point here. And there is a difference between these two points, and that's significant. At P.01. So, overall, those people who were in the uh, high baseball knowledge group uh, had higher comprehension scores than those people in the low baseball knowledge group. So that's the main effect of uh, baseball knowledge. Now, and I believe I can just erase it, what about you know the main effect for uh, verbal IQ? Well, to find that on the graph, what we have to do is we have to identify low IQ, and we average those two points together, and I draw a star, or at least I thought I was going to draw a straw, a star. And these two points, and we average them together here. And we see that there is a difference at the point for, uh, 05 level here. So there's an effect of low versus high IQ on reading comprehension. That is, if you, uh, uh, if you have a high uh, you know, uh, verbal IQ, you comprehend more in the past than low. But, so we've identified and interpreted those main effects, but we have the interaction here. These lines are not parallel. And so 